Next up, questions 51 to 75 of the list of 100 questions for atheists. Really, the first thing that goes through my head for most of these questions is, do you actually understand just how dumb that sounds? And clearly, he doesn't. So here we go again, I guess. Welcome back to part three of Erasmus's 100 Questions for Atheists. And to be honest, so far I am not at all impressed. Now, I didn't really expect to be. I mean, come on, be honest. When was the last time any of these silly questions for atheist videos have really asked anything that you just didn't roll your eyes at? Unlike some people I could mention, this time it isn't so much laughably dishonest, although there is certainly some of that, but most of it is just hopelessly ignorant. It's like, have you ever cracked a textbook in your life? And the answer is clearly no. So here we go again. Let's hope for something worthwhile, but don't hold your breath. Now, if you remember, the last time out, we stopped with the question, where is your evidence that Jesus wasn't crucified? Well, because there is no evidence that it ever happened in the first place. That's like asking Christians where their evidence that Muhammad didn't ride off to heaven on the back of a winged horse was. You'll just get crickets, because they have none. There is no evidence that it didn't happen. They have to provide evidence that it did. The only rational answer is, until there is objective evidence to support such a claim, we will not accept it as true. That works for pretty much all questions posed by the religious. Zero evidence means zero acceptance. If you want us to believe, back it up. If you can't, leave us alone. Put up or shut up. It's really not that hard. Where is your evidence that he did? Where is your evidence that Buddha did not perform the twin miracle? You know, the one where he levitated and made it rain only on people who wanted to get wet. If you can't prove it didn't happen, well, that means it must have happened, right? I mean, isn't that kind of the thing that you're trying to push here? Yeah, doesn't work, does it? Because Muhammad is a much more historically demonstrable individual, and Jesus is not. We know that Muhammad was real, although we do reject all of the miraculous nonsense that Muslims believe in because that's not independently demonstrable. Now, that doesn't mean that there absolutely was a Muhammad. There are Muslim scholars out there like Muhammad's Ven Kalish who decided after study that Muhammad probably never existed. I honestly don't know, and it really doesn't matter. The religious versions in both cases are complete nonsense. As a secular holiday, yes, of course I do, but not as a religious one. And you have to remember that the Christians stole the holiday from the pagans in the first place, so it isn't like they own it or anything. Like most things in Christianity, believers simply absconded with things that they liked and tried to pretend that it was theirs. And that never really works very well, does it? Nope, it's not. Now, it might be for you, but for most people, it's just a winter holiday for getting together with family and friends and exchanging gifts. Very little involved in the modern celebration of Christmas has anything at all to do with Christianity. Santa Claus, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, 
Frosty the Snowman. That's all purely secular. No imaginary gods required. And you'd realize that if you actually walked into any mass market retailer and looked at their Christmas decorations. There's lots of trees and balls and garlands, all kinds of stuff like that. You know what you won't find? Manger scenes. You might find one stuffed on the bottom shelf that nobody buys, but most of the stuff that you find is 100% secular. So, as is no surprise, you're just wrong. Nope. But then again, I don't usually say happy holidays either. I don't run around trying to tell people what to do. It's all a pretty meaningless gesture. I also don't say bless you when people sneeze. It's a basic biological function. Get over it. I mean, what do you say when somebody farts? I don't care. Say whatever you want. Just don't think that you get to mandate what other people say. People can say anything they care to, if they care to. They can also say absolutely nothing at all. It doesn't matter. But it is an atheist trying to force people to stop saying anything. It's the religious insisting that Happy Holidays has to go away because they get personally offended that their religion isn't being catered to. Well, fuck your religion! I already answered that. I don't. I don't care. Move on! Nope. Not since my kids grew up, and even when I did, it was purely secular. Easter bunnies and hiding eggs and all that kind of stuff. That has nothing at all to do with Christianity. And as with Christmas, Christians stole Easter from the pagans as well. So it's not yours. No, it's not. It goes back to pagan origins, named after the goddess of fertility, Ostara. And it's a fertility rite, which is why the Easter Bunny came to be associated with it in the first place. Your side stole it. In fact, as with most of these so-called Christian holidays, you simply co-opted existing pagan holidays as a means to convince the non-Christian to adopt your beliefs. It's why a lot of pagan gods suddenly became Catholic saints. Just saying. It was a conversion tactic. You know, other than just beating the crap out of non-believers until they agreed to convert. Nope. I already talked about that, too. You know, I really should stop giving away answers before Erasmus gets around to it, because he isn't that original, and I'm starting to realize I'm just going to have to revisit it down the line. But no. Why would I? It's a basic biological function. Why should we say anything when someone has a basic biological function? It's dumb. So no. I don't personally give a shit. Say whatever you want to say. Don't think I have to say what you want me to say, though. That's just going to start a fight. Because schools exist to impart knowledge, not superstition. If you want to pray, go to church. There's a place for that. If you want to learn, go to school. There's a place for that. They are not the same place. This really can't be that hard for you to understand, but unfortunately, the religious get it in their heads for some weird reason that absolutely everything has to revolve around their silly beliefs. And they're wrong. It depends on what they say. 
If they're pushing our particular religious belief, then yes. Or if not fired, then certainly disciplined. That is not what they've been hired to do. You're not allowed to just say any crazy crap that comes to mind. You have a job to do. You have to do the job as your employers want you to do it. If you want to preach, go get a job at a religious school where your employers allow you to preach. Leave people who don't want your religious nonsense alone. Again, that depends on the context. If they're teaching a comparative religions class, then no, obviously not. If they're teaching history, then religion is probably going to come up, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're teaching math, and you decide to go on an hour-long diatribe on Christianity, you're probably in the wrong line of work. Again, depending on the context, but yes, for the exact same reasons. There are no double standards here. No religion, none at all, should ever get a pass. I always love how these people try to predict what people are going to say, and they're almost always wrong. Did you ever notice that? They never get it right. Because, as far as I'm concerned, fuck Jesus and fuck Muhammad. Fuck Christianity and fuck Islam. Just fuck them all. This is not playing favorites. It's having a single consistent standard. Give it a shot. <laughs> Me? I don't. Why do you? Because that's what Christians typically want. They're the ones trying to force Merry Christmas, not us. Granted, Happy Holidays is a more inclusive greeting because there happen to be a lot more than one celebration going on, but I really don't care. Leave it up to the individual companies to decide what they want their employees to say. I honestly don't care. I'm not the one pretending that there's an annual war on Christmas. That's you people! Since when? I have multiple advanced scientific degrees. So do a lot of atheists, or if they don't, they tend to be very well read in the sciences. Now, I can't speak for anyone else, obviously, but I don't say anything that I am not educated enough to understand. Now, why do you constantly repeat complete nonsense from religious apologists when you have clearly never taken the time to go and check it out to see if any of it makes any rational sense? Why haven't you even read your own damn Bible? We see theists constantly saying things, and the Bible says, well, that's heretical. But they don't seem to care, because, you know, you just get to skip over those passages you don't like, apparently. So why is it that you have that problem, theist? That's not us. That's you. You're the one who believes that God made absolutely everything from absolutely nothing. Are you that ignorant of your own theology? No atheist has ever said that. Ever. That's you people. It's the religious just yanking stupid stuff out of their assholes and pretending that we said it. We didn't. Citation needed. You won't find one. I don't know. You're the one that says that. You tell us. Because it's the religious side that's doing all of the bald rationalizing. Not atheists. We go by the evidence. The religious go by their emotions. We follow the evidence to the most rational conclusion. The religious start with an emotionally comforting conclusion, and then they cherry-pick the data to find things that they can force to come to their defense. You guys are doing rationality completely backwards. Knock it off. 
You know, I'm just going to skip over the dishonesty, so if there's any other questions after this that are doing the same damn thing, I'm not going to provide answers. I've done that. I'm tired of dealing with it. This guy needs to stop being a lying bastard. No, but you do, because you have no evidence. You don't even understand what the word means. So, I'm going to help you out. Evidence, when we ask you for it, we mean the available body of facts or information indicating whether a belief or proposition is true or valid. We are not concerned with your feelings. We are not concerned with your beliefs. We don't care about your interpretations. We care about direct, demonstrable, objectively verifiable data that can be examined by all without regards for your beliefs. Because your beliefs don't matter. Only the facts do. And the problem that we have pretty consistently is that the religious have no facts. They have nothing but feelings. When we ask, where is your evidence for Jesus? All you can say is, well, it says so in the Bible. No, that's not evidence. Those are unsubstantiated claims made in a book of mythology. So let's try a different one. Where is your evidence for God? Well, we have faith. No, that's not evidence. Those are your emotions. Those are the things that you wish were true, not the things that you can prove are true. You have to do a whole lot better than that. Because you can hardly do any worse. I believe they're possible. I have no position on the actual existence of any aliens, but they could be out there. We already know that life can and does exist in the universe. I mean, here we are. We already know that there are billions and billions of other Earth-like planets out there just in our own galaxy. We know that there's water, and we know that there are prebiotic amino acid compounds just floating around out in space. So it is certainly possible, perhaps it's even likely, that life did evolve elsewhere, perhaps on many, many, many other planets. Did it? Well, I can't say until we have direct demonstrable evidence for any specific instances, but it does seem statistically likely. I have no faith whatsoever in any conclusion that you can offer, because I'm not an idiot. And that's where we're going to stop this time, even though we skipped one because pff, it was dumb and dishonest, and that's completely his fault, not mine. But honestly, I've got to ask. Why are the religious so blatantly dishonest? They have to know that we're not the ones actually making these claims. At least, they should know if they were at all credible. But since they're not, maybe it's just their own pig ignorance to blame. But it's not like they ever talk to atheists. They just listen to their own religious leadership talk about atheists while not actually having talked to any atheists themselves. And then, this Erasmus has the gall to accuse atheists of just blindly following what scientists have to say. Because it isn't like we aren't better educated than the religious are or anything. Oh wait, according to all of the statistics we have, we are. We are smarter than they are. We are better educated than they are. We know a hell of a lot more about their own religions than they do. And we're not out there lying through our teeth, asking disingenuous questions to the religious for hits on YouTube. Because we're not that dumb. It's really sad that they are. All right, see you next time for the conclusion of this complete mess. Does anyone think it's going to get any better? Yeah. Neither do I. Boom, dicky, boom, dicky, boom, dicky, boom, dicky, boom, dicky, boom, dicky.